Welcome to section 10.3 of genetics. In this section, we will be memorizing the details of Patau syndrome. Let's get started. Our story starts with a ground level view of a little skirmish between some toys. So let's introduce the first few toys. On the right, you'll see the hero of the story. He's our Buzzy character, and you can see him punching this toy villain. Notice that when our Buzzy character punches the villain, there's this cartoony pow symbol. This pow will help you remember Patau syndrome. Pow, Patau. Notice that this punch really messed up the face of this villain toy. The punch gave him a cleft palate. This punch-induced cleft will help you remember that Patau syndrome patients often have cleft lips or cleft palates. Now look at the hand on this villain. He has six fingers. This signifies polydactyly, or extra fingers, which is common in Patau syndrome. So six fingers, polydactyly. Now our Buzzy character doesn't look that perfect either. In fact, fact, the villain has been experimenting on other toys, swapping out parts for other parts. Our hero recently had his head swapped out for a much smaller Lego head. This micro Lego head will help you remember microcephaly, which is common in Patau syndrome. Now it's fitting that our Buzzy character has a toy halo attached to his suit. After all, he is the hero of our story. Anyways, the halo will help you remember that Patau syndrome patients often have holoprosencephaly. In holoprosencephaly, the forebrain fails to separate into two hemispheres. So halo, holoprosencephaly. Now our villain is a lover of all things dark and creepy, including Friday the 13th. He has taken a human's calendar and circled this ominous date. The fact that 13 is circled will help you remember that there is an extra chromosome 13 in Patau syndrome. In fact, Patau syndrome is also called trisomy 13. So Friday the 13th, trisomy 13. Remember how our hero got his head swapped out for a smaller Lego head? Well, he wasn't the only victim of this villain toy. Here is a potato toy strapped down and being tortured by a magnifying glass. See how the heat is burning a hole in his outermost layer of skin? Or at least, his outermost layer of plastic. Well, this looks like cutis aplasia. Cutis aplasia indicates that a portion of skin, or even bone sometimes, is missing. If you think of a hole of skin missing, like in our potato character, you can remember cutis aplasia in Patau syndrome. Here are two other victims who sympathize with the burning potato. Look at this cowgirl reach out with compassion. Unfortunately, she is sewn up to the cowboy. This must have happened recently because the villain was still holding the needle and thread in his six-fingered hand right before he got punched and received his cleft palate. Anyways, the fact that these two toys are sewn up represents the meiotic non disjunction of chromosomes that leads to an extra chromosome 13. So conjoin toys for non-disjunction. Our cowboy character is dealing with his own issues at the moment. Notice how the villain plucked his eyes out. This poor cowboy can't see. He just has these tiny little stitchings now where his eyes were. These tiny stitchings will help you remember microophthalmia, or small eyes, which is common in Patau syndrome. Now the human in the background is obviously unaware of the toy-themed violence occurring at her feet. She could be overcome with relief since her medical labs recently came back normal. This medical report indicating normal labs will help you remember that mothers with a fetus affected with Patau syndrome will have a normal beta-HCG, AFP, inhibit A, and estriol. In the first trimester, the beta-HCG can be low. However, it's best to remember these labs in the second trimester and just recall that they are all normal. So normal labs with Patau syndrome. Now this careless human likes to keep a big bag of kidney beans around. She doesn't take great care of them or do anything with them, so they got all these nasty growths on them. These nasty little growths on the kidney beans kind of look like little cysts. So cysts on kidneys. So these cystic kidneys will help you remember that patients with Patau syndrome often have polycystic kidney disease. Lastly, notice how the human is on a rocking chair. Do you notice the interesting shape of her feet? So the shape of her feet and the fact that she's on a rocking chair will help you remember that patients with Patau syndrome have rocker bottom feet or feet shaped like rocking chairs. And with that, we have completed all the details of Patau syndrome.